just wanted to do a uh, video about the paint on the uh, Ford GPW and the Willys Jeeps and just cover a bit of what I've learned about it or try and explain a few things about it. Um, it's not particularly straightforward to explain because there's a lot of difference between Jeeps and throughout the war how things were painted and what they were painted with. So um, I'll just cover what I've learned about the sort of the late war Ford GPWs. We'll try and cover as as much as I can. Some of it may not be totally correct and a lot of it is my sort of own viewpoints about it, about what I've learned. But it'll give you a general idea about paint on uh, Jeeps and sort of what they should be like and how things were painted, at least on the late Ford GPWs anyway. So um, as we know, this is a, a late GPW and on this one, the paint I've put on it is, uh, it's a lustreless olive drab, which is what it should be. So this is from, the paint on this one is a mix from a UK supplier and it's a mix of their completely matte paint and a bit of their sort of, uh, it's not a gloss, but it's a satin paint. It's a 50-50 mix and to me, that gives quite an accurate uh, representation of what the paint should have been like on a World War II Jeep. Now you may have seen some photos from World War II showing uh, jeeps in the factories and jeeps out in the field and often uh, the jeeps uh, in World War II were a lot more scruffy and a lot more dirty and oily than uh, people today would be happy to accept. Um, you know it's your show jeep or your pride and joy you don't really want it looking particularly scruffy um, but in World War II they obviously didn't care about that. The main point of paint, the first point of paint, is corrosion protection uh, and camouflage second. So the reason uh, everything, nearly everything on a Jeep is painted is to protect it from corrosion. Now, as you can see, a Jeep is quite a open vehicle. There's places for water. It's not like a modern vehicle, which is well sealed. There's places for water and damp to get in absolutely everywhere. Um, as we can come around here, we can see the spray goes up. It can get pushed up underneath there. The engine compartment's just inside there. So uh, water gets everywhere. And when water gets on metal, of course, it corrodes. So the most important thing is to prevent corrosion so that Jeeps last longer um, than if they weren't painted. So pretty much everything on a Jeep is painted. And um, we can see around here what happens if it's not painted underneath at the rear here. Ooh, excuse me. There you go. You can see just a bit of the bottom of that bolt hasn't been painted and it's corrode corroded. So you can see the importance of corrosion uh, protection on Jeeps. So that was the most important aim for uh, painting. And that's why nearly everything is painted on a Jeep. Now, if we come underneath here, I'll explain a few things about the painting process. So the GPWs at least were painted as a uh, full tub, which had, actually if I come around this way, painted as a full tub, which was fitted out with the fuel tank. It was fitted out with the uh, side handles, it was fitted out with the hip pads as well, the fuel line which goes underneath and runs to the firewall, the brackets on the firewall, they were uh, painted as one assembly all together. If we come round to the the oil, that was, uh, excuse me, the oil um, can, that was also painted fitted to the Jeep. So the tub was painted as one component and then the frame was also painted as one component as well. But the frame was painted separately and then the engine, the transmission were fitted and then the transfer case was fitted. Now the engine and transmission were painted as one block by Ford, one sub-assembly and they came in this uh, Ford sort of tractor grey in one complete component and then they were placed in a uh, painted frame and then a painted tub was put on top. And to the rear of the transmission, a olive drab painted transmission was fitted. So the engine and transmission are blue and come as one piece, or grey should I say, and then the transfer case is olive drab and fitted separately. So that's why the um, block inside the Ford is uh, grey and not uh, green. It's because of the way Ford painted them and fitted them to the frame. So if we come round, some of the other interesting things about this then, if the um, tub was painted as one assembly with the hip pads, Underneath, when I was restoring this one, I found that the, underneath the hip pads, the, uh, you could see the primer, and the primer for these Jeeps, for most of them, was a sort of a red oxide oxblood. So when I was taking it apart, underneath the hip pads, as I removed them, the original hip pads, I found red oxide. The same is true for the body handles. Underneath here was red oxide, and also 
on the reflectors underneath those was red oxide. And also on the body handles on the back sides, I found red oxide as well, which means that the uh, handles came as red oxide painted with no olive drab to, to them, were fitted to a primed olive drab tub and then sprayed. And the spraying from this sort of angle, obviously you couldn't get the uh, olive drab all the way around. So there was red oxide on that side. So this just shows the sort of the assembly um, method and um, sequence for fitting things. So um, unfortunately for my tub and as it was with many, peop many people's Jeeps, uh, we're sort of constrained by the sequence that we build things and how we put it together. So often the tub is painted um, and then body handles are added. So you often don't have the red oxide underneath the handles and I haven't on this one, but it's something no one's ever gonna notice, but it's just an interesting point. And under the hip pads as well, if the hip pads were fitted to a primed body, which hadn't been sprayed in olive drab, then the hip pads should be sprayed in olive drab. Now, I come around this way. I haven't painted mine in olive drab. Um, and I think you'd get some strange looks if you did from people. They'd say, well, why have you painted those in olive drab? But going on what I found in my Jeep and what I've seen on other Jeeps on the nets, at least for these late Ford GPWs, the hip pads were placed onto a red oxide painted uh, tub. So and the uh, hip pads then should be olive drab, really. Now, over the years, I imagine the olive drab um, flakes off and comes off those hip pads quite easily. So it's difficult to find these days uh, with it on there. But uh, by all rights, yes, there should be uh, olive drab, those painted uh, hip pads. So that's just another interesting feature. Now, if we uh, come round here, I'll show you why most people don't paint their tubs in this sort of olive, uh, this flat olive drab rather than the gloss. Because, as you can see, the flat picks up a lot of grease and oil. You can see on the edge here where I've been getting in and out, how it's sort of starting to go satin because I've been putting my hands on here and grabbing it. The oil from my hands is going onto there and making it slightly shiny. Now, for um, to be totally accurate, that's how it should be on a Jeep. Um, it shouldn't be gloss or anything like that. So um, you should have these oil marks. And some people don't like this because obviously if you're taking it to shows and what have you, it looks slightly grubby. Um, you can't clean this as easily as if it was just gloss and you could just rub it off. Um, so most people don't like that, but personally for historical accuracy, I quite like that. I like the way it picks up all the oil marks. You can see on here, let's turn you off actually, so you don't drain any battery. You can see here where I've sprayed WD-40 and anti-corrosion uh, oils around the dash. You can see how it's picked up around there. So the uh, drab has gone slightly sort of glossy there. And on the um, light as well, we can see it down uh, the fender there, some oil's gone in there. I spray it with oil to keep it corrosion protected as well. So make sure that that drab lasts a little bit longer. But as I've used the Jeep now for about a thousand miles, we can see how it's sort of wearing in a bit. So on the floor, you can see where my heels go. The, uh, it's starting to wear away. On the uh, pedals as well, it's a thousand miles worth of wear, which is not bad really. You can see where the high spots are starting to wear. So it's, uh, quite, uh, it's quite interesting the way that that's um, starting to wear in. So the next interesting thing about uh, the, the spray paint and the paint on Jeeps is that often we uh, today we quite like to have neat looking Jeeps don't we? We don't want our Jeep to have overspray and uh, bits of paint where we think they shouldn't be. However again in World War II this was not the primary concern. Uh, obviously they want to protect certain areas from overspray and paint um, but it wasn't too much of an issue for them. Corrosion protection was more important to them. So uh, under the hood We've got some interesting things here. The paint under the hood on my Jeep is original paint. I've done some overspray at the bottom there where it was quite worn, but the centre portion where you can see the red coming through, which is the oxide primer underneath, is uh, original paint. And on the uh, lubrication chart, we can see a band there. Now what that band was, there used to be the stencil which said lubrication chart on it, or lubrication order, I can't remember now. Um, and that's come off over time, but what's remained is the uh, where the masking tape had been and you can see the different color underneath so that uh, lubrication chart came as a sub assembly was uh, taped over on where they'd uh, painted the lubrication order white lettering fitted to the Jeep it was the hood was sprayed on the Jeep because underneath is red oxide and then after they'd sprayed it all over they ripped the piece of masking tape off which you can see and uh, that was what was left so uh, you can see again how the sort of order of things were painted on a Jeep 
out, which is quite interesting. Now, once everything was fitted together on the Jeep, so you've got a whole assembly together, Jeep's nearly ready to leave. Now, just due to the, the way it was assembled and the order, it means some parts would have not have got paint on them. And again, we want corrosion protection. So before the Jeep left the factory, they did a final spray. They would have gone round and uh, just given a touch-up spray to everything. And you can see, again, collectors today and restorers today, we don't like overspray, we really do we? We want everything to be nice. So we want our air cleaner to be fully black and we want our uh, fuel strainer body to be uh, natural metal uh, with the decal. We don't want any uh, overspray on the decal. But again, in World War II, they didn't really care about that. What they wanted to do was give it a spray and if some went everywhere, then that's okay. But uh, there are photos online which show um, in the final assemblies of a Willys, they put a cardboard template across here and then sprayed from a low angle like this to uh, cover the top of the uh, fuel uh, filter. And also, at the same time, I'd also imagine that uh, they gave a spray onto the uh, bond straps here. So I believe these should be painted because of the way that I found them, I found paint underneath them. So I'd imagine these were also painted in the touch-up uh, paint. But what you get when you spray with a, a cover there is you get a bit of overspray on top of the, fuel, on top of the uh, air cleaner. And also I've got original overspray this is the original decal and original overspray here from the factory along the top here. Now, if you're restoring one, you might go, oh, I don't want any overspray on there, but this is original decal, original paint and original overspray on that. In all uh, fairness, this should also have uh, been sprayed as well, but uh, it didn't so because I took this off and sprayed it because I didn't want to, <laughs> I didn't want to damage the original overspray with modern overspray so that I could keep this overspray intact, which is a bit, uh, it's a bit ridiculous, but there you go, that's the way it is. Um, so that's uh, a bit of overspray for you. Again, I would imagine there'll be overspray. I have, I tried to avoid it. <laughs> Being a, a modern day restorer, you know, as I said, overspray does look a bit, um, it does look a bit, uh, not dirty, but uh, not particularly neat. So I tried to avoid it on the engine, but I imagine there'll be overspray on the engine as well. Um, overspray all over the place, really. But uh, I avoided it. Another thing is, if I take down the hood, excuse me, one-handed, down. The, uh, the cowl strip as well should have overspray as well. So for, with the final pass, when the pass which was done on this side and they sprayed along here, I originally had a, a, cowl, a different cowl strip on here when I sprayed it and the cowl strip picked up overspray exactly as seen in photos just along here. It looked really good but um, that cow strip wasn't quite correct so I changed it to this one here and I haven't resprayed it since there so this is uh, all black at the moment but there should be some overspray on that cow strip as well. Let's have a look else around we can see any other interesting things. More oil grubby marks again not everybody likes that I quite like that I like the way you've got the oil prints the hand prints on there you can see where the poppers have worn in a bit and they've uh, knocked the paint off uh, the sockets there. The uh, radio filter box as well, that's all sprayed up. Coming around the back, you can see why um, spray paint is so important because back here, the water just gets sprayed everywhere. I mean, this is electrical electrical sockets back here. This is your, your, your lights. So um, the spray just goes straight onto those. So it's very important that everything has a good coating of uh, spray paint to keep it uh, Nice and protected, and as you can see, having said that, my uh, washers aren't painted, and underneath you can see some of the, the tub uh, hardware is not painted either, so I tried my best. I haven't achieved it everywhere. Um, what else? Another thing Another thing that I've noticed after using it, of course, is that the top bows are, um, they're fiddly. They're not particularly easy to use, and it's nearly impossible, or is impossible, really, to protect the paintwork here from getting scratched by the top bows as you pull it out and try and lie it in uh, it hits around here and scratches it so there's a very common area to have good scratches on and that happens very quickly it's just the design of it there's uh, nothing you can do about it in World War II you see all sorts of things with top bows you see them lying all over the place um, half put in not put in the end bit they didn't bother with it you know because it's fiddly and what have you so this area would pick up a hell of a lot of scratches and I've started to get a few there but again I don't mind because my Jeep's for using. Um, I want it to look how it would have looked in World War II rather than sort of a show Jeep, um, but still keep it in good condition. And around the back, 
oily. Still missing the bumperettes, waiting for those. Gas can, that's interesting. So the gas can is in its original paint here. Um, and you can see the top of it has got some oil on it because I oiled it a bit to, to keep it uh, happy and stop the corrosion. I didn't want to respray it or anything like that. But when you use the gas can, of course, petrol comes sloshing out everywhere. Once the petrol gets on the paint, it removes all that oil. And you can see that's the unoiled uh, paint. That's what it looks like there. And the buckle as well. This buckle is factory OD spray painted. So there's a clasp. It starts to wear off. And uh, this... Um, the gas canister um, holder or bracket is also factory sprayed, sort of an apple green. That's slightly different to the olive drab on my Jeep. And you can see the olive, uh, excuse me, you can see ooh, the uh, red oxide primer underneath, which is quite interesting. So red oxide was very important. And more oil, oil marks. And the hood, sorry, the uh, canvas seems to be doing pretty well. It picks up a bit of dirt. Um, but it's, uh, it's not doing too badly actually, I didn't get it too dirty, it's been thrown on the floor a couple of times and it gets folded up and thrown behind the back of the seat so it picks up a few marks and creases and things like that, uh, so that's just the wear you get on there, then looking down, had people in and out of the back of the jeep and everything, and you, uh, you get wear on the high points on the footrests where people put their feet, uh, on the floor obviously gets scratched up. I've had people in here with high heels and things like that <laughs> rather than GIs with rubber boots, uh, rubber sole boots, so it gets uh, scratched up quite a lot. But it's uh, done pretty well for a thousand, nearly a thousand miles now. And obviously on the rear there, the brackets holding on the uh, rear seat also get, uh, gets uh, quite scratched on the rear seat as you move it in and out. But uh, that's it, that's the uh, paint on the Jeep at the moment. So. Um, I hope that was interesting to you. As I said, a lot of it is just my own viewpoint from having looked at Jeeps and looked at late GPWs. Um, I'll try and include some photos with this video as well to illustrate what I was uh, talking about. But I hope you enjoyed it. Any questions, just ask in the comments uh, below and uh, like and subscribe and I'll continue to put some more videos up if they're of any interest to you. Thanks a lot.